Greetings human life forms, I'm the Meister. welcome back to another prediction video. Real quick, I just want to say there's a thunderstorm going on, so my dog might run down here, but don't think you guys were he here or see him anyways. But today we're doing the Dallas Cowboys, um, interesting team, um, guessing has the potential to get m the most views, because it's America's team. And as a Bills fan, I think everyone knows how I feel about the Dallas Cowboys, just if I like them or not. Um, but anyways, the Cowboys have an amazing offense, which I've stated in previous videos. They have a really good offense. Defense is eh, where I get a little iffy. They still have some names on there, but... Uh, Last year, their defense was not too good. Um, their offense will probably be <laughs> amazing this season. So, without further ado, we're going to get right into this. Another thing real quick. This morning, earlier today, I streamed on Twitch. And if you missed out on that, that's because you do not follow me on Twitch. So you should if you don't want to miss any surprise streams that I'll be doing. So, I'll leave my Twitch in the description below. And also, I don't, he probably doesn't watch my videos, but the Goat House, I'm upset with him. I, I really am. I thought he was at least going to have the Bills go to the AFC Championship game. But he gave us the three seed below the Tennessee Titans. And had us losing in the divisional round to Tennessee in Nashville. That hurt me. You, you're not allowed to do... You, like, you, you, had them, you had the Bills as the two seed, and then the Titans get one player, and you're like, oh, yep, they're going to the AFC Championship game instead of Buffalo. That's rude. You gotta learn your manners, because that is just not... It's not cool. So, I'm gonna get right into this now. Week one, at the Buccaneers. Buccaneers... One of the best teams in the league. They brought back all of their starters from the Super Bowl, from their Super Bowl win a year ago. So, really, isn't no argument with anyone here besides stupid Cowboys fans. Um, oh, and I wanted to start off the year. Week two is an interesting game at the LA Chargers. Now, this is going to be a bit of a flight over there. Um, Chargers, we know, do not have m many fans, but. They're in a new location with a new stadium. So there might be fans. And this is their home opener, too. So there might be Chargers fans. As crazy as that is to hear. There might actually be fans. So, like not due to COVID, but just fans in general. Um, but yeah, offense um, can really take a step up. Herbert played really well last year. Um, he could definitely take that next step. He probably will take that next step with Keenan Allen. Mike Williams, that was actually a very useful weapon for Justin Herbert last season. And, of course, they got Austin Eckler, um, great receiving back. And then defense, it's kind of an underrated defense, even though they let up 45 points to Cam Newton. Might have to rethink that one. But anyways, this is going to be a really good game. So, the way I look at it, I don't know if it's a stupid way to look at it. I look at, for example, Cowboys offense and the Chargers defense. And I put them together, and I see how many points the Cowboys can get out of it. I'm seeing, like, probably, like, high 20s, maybe low 30s, like, maybe, like, 27 to 30 points. And then Chargers... Hmm... You know, I'm going to give this one to the Cowboys here. I think that they, they're they opening up the season against a tough opponent. And they're going to get right back on track week two, beating the Chargers. Week three, hosting the Philadelphia Eagles, their division rival. That probably won't be much of a rival this year. Cowboys will win that one. Week four, hosting the Carolina Panthers. Another interesting game, another team with... Another underrated defense, even though 
defense wasn't too great last season, but it was average. I guess you'd say average. Um, offense can be very, very interesting. Sam Darnold, he could possibly have a breakout year, maybe, because he has weapons all around him. He's got, of course, everyone knows Christian McCaffrey. My apologies. Um, they have DJ Moore, and they have Robbie Anderson, the nice wide receiving duo. And, of course, Sam Darnold is familiar with Robbie Anderson because they used to play on the Jets and all that. So this game could be a shootout, but at the end of the day, I definitely trust the Cowboys' offense more than I do the Panthers. So Week 5, hosting division rival Giants. And week 6 matchup. Ooh. This is, oh, man. This game could go either way. If Daniel Jones can take another step, well, if he took one at all, um, but if he takes his first step, or his second step, if some people think he took a first step, um, this game could easily go to the Giants. The division could easily go to the Giants. Well, no, they'd get past the Cowboys. I'm not sure about the football team. But um, I'm going to go with the Cowboys again here. 4-1, it seems a bit ridiculous, but, <laughs> um, yeah, their schedule's kind of easy to start off. Eagles, Panthers, and Giants, honestly, yeah, it's a nice little stretch, but then it goes like, because you have the New England Patriots the following week. Patriots, really good defense. They'll probably be able to find ways to lock down Amari Cooper, maybe even get to Dak Prescott a couple times. Um, and offense, <laughs> I'm starting to think Mac Jones might be starting. I say I'm not going to predict it, like who will be starter, um, even though I'm kind of predicting Newton to be the starter. But they paid him $14 million. But in his... Um, mini camp videos because they started it off mini camp today for the Patriots. Cam Newton looks terrible every time he throws it, he's like overthrowing receivers. And then when uh, their new guy, Mac Jones, when he throws the football, it's been underthrown and every single time. But the receiver can catch it because at least it's not overthrown instead of underthrown. So. <laughs> Well, I mean, it was a rainy day, but I think that's kind of a dumb excuse. Newton is injured, though, slightly, so that could be a reason why. But this is going to be a great game here. This is going to be an amazing game. But Mike McCarthy, I don't really trust Mike McCarthy. He didn't coach too well last year. And Bill Belichick is one of the greatest head coaches of all time, which is what everyone says. Um, so I'm going to go with Patriots here, and they're at home too, so I'm going to go Patriots there. Coming off the bye week, at the Minnesota Vikings. Vikings, um, there's news about Daniel Hunter today, um, they got a restructured contract. So Hunter's happy, the Vikings are happy, happy football team. And then, yeah, their defense can get a lot better, they had a lot of injuries on the defensive side a year ago, so they'll probably um, definitely be better next year or this coming season. Uh, the, um, on the offense, Delvin Cook, as we all know, he's an amazing running back. Kirk Cousins, a very underrated quarterback, which he's a really solid quarterback. His is slight accuracy issues, but he's still pretty good for the Vikings. And, of course, the wide-receiving duo of Adam Thielen and Justin Jefferson. Kind of feel like, recently, Adam Thielen has been a bit overhyped. I mean, he makes great catches. Like, don't get me wrong, he's a good wide receiver. It's just that I feel like he's getting a little too much attention. You know, he's just a slot receiver. Like, I don't... I mean, Cole Beasley gets a lot of attention. That's because he is the best slot receiver in the league. But Adam Thielen, he's been very quiet, and people are giving him, like, a lot of attention. I don't really see it. I mean, I have to look at his stats again. Hold on, let me actually look at his stats. I'm actually going to do this. Hold on. I know it's all zoomed in, but... Adam Thielen stats. Hold on. Let me just check something. Um... 
20, 20, 925 yards and 14 touchdowns. That's actually really good. Okay, scratch that. I apologize. <laughs> That's like the same stats as Cole Beasley, except well, except Cole Beasley had like 50 more receiving yards, and Thielen has like more touchdowns. I'm pretty sure. I highly doubt. I don't think Cole Beasley scored 14 or more touchdowns last year. But it's, this is a close game. I'm going to go with the Vikings here. Just because I like them at home here. And I don't trust the Cowboys defense. <laughs> because their defense sucks. Now going into week 9 here. Hosting the Denver Broncos. A very underrated team. Only because Drew Locke is on it. And it's kind of like, great team, Drew Locke. And then it just sinks down. People are, like, jumping off the lock train really quickly. Like, he could probably not have a breakout year, but they have a good defense, good offense, works well around, except for that Drew Lock issue again. That little sliver of cancer that is will possibly grow or will be healed this season. So I'm going to go with the trusted team here, Cowboys. Um, just kidding. Think about the Cowboys beat the Broncos? <laughs> no. And way too many home games here. But yeah, this this is gonna rest in the arm in the arm of Drew Locke. I think he'll get that extra throw in there for an upset for the Cowboys. Week ten hosting the Atlanta Falcons. Week eleven at the Ch Well, that's an easy one to predict. Chiefs, moving on. Hosting the Las Vegas Raiders. Raiders defense sucks just like Dallas defense. Except Dallas defense is probably better than Raiders defense. And then the offense, both good offenses, but Cowboys has a better offense and Raiders a worse offense. So this is an easy one for me. Thursday Night Football. Questionable Thursday night football game, but six and five so far for the Cowboys. Their only losses were to reigning AFC champions, reigning Super Bowl champions, two seven and oh no, just one seven and nine team, and a terrible team from a year ago. So Thursday night football, week thirteen, two back to back Thursday night games, very interesting. Um, New Orleans Saints. Um, they're going to have Jameis Winston, which everyone is guessing is going to be their quarterback. He should be their quarterback. Um, defense, good defense. They couldn't really do much in free agency. I'm sure a lot of people wanted them to make moves, but they literally couldn't because they literally have, if they spent like a single cent, like their team would have just burst into flames because science. So they couldn't really make any moves. Uh, they signed, uh, at least they got um, Taysom Hill locked down for an $80 million contract. So that's good. That's good. He, he's a good piece for them. But I'm going to go with the Saints here. Um, two offenses that could be really good um, in this game. But we all know they always have defensive games for some weird reason. But they have a different head coach, so it could be a different outcome. Week 14 at Washington... I'm going to go with Washington here. I absolutely love Washington. Wa Washington is, I feel like, is in a great position. Not to make a run for the Super Bowl or anything. I'm not crazy. But contenders to definitely make the playoffs. It's not like that same old NFC East where, like, well, these teams are going to suck. Well, I guess this team will suck a little less than the rest of them. So he's going to make it to the playoffs. No, I actually think they're, the football team will be in the mix with, like, other playoff teams and be like a 10 win 11 win team and deserve to make the playoffs so I'm, I'm uh, like I love their defense I love their offense I love that team Ron Rivera good head coach too he even coached my Sean McDermott so love him week 15 at the Giants mm. I'm gonna have them split 
Because I mentioned even before, like, it was such a tough game to predict. And it rests on Daniel Jones. I think the second time around, the Giants will be able to take down Dallas. Week 16. Mm. I gotta do it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I really like Washington. I just really like Washington. I feel like they're a very underrated team. I don't care how many people lash out against me. Any Cowboys fans? You know, probably laugh if Cowboys fan talks, but... <laughs> uh, yeah, Washington is an amazing team. I love their team. I can't talk about them enough, how much I like them. So, enough of me rambling about Washington. Moving on to week 17. Hosting the Arizona Cardinals. I'm going to have... Pretty sure I had Cardinals in this one, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, no. I'm wrong. Yeah. I was going to pick Cowboys, but I thought I'd pick Cardinals. Um, yeah. This is going to be an offensive battle here. This is a huge game for Dallas. If you look at their record up here, 7-9, and nine, they really need this win. So... They'll probably scrape out a win against Arizona and then end up the season at Philadelphia and they will end up the season with the win because the Eagles suck. <sighs> I just realized something hilarious. 89 for the Dallas Cowboys. You absolutely love to see it. You love for them to suck even more, but you can't make fun of them as much if they're not 8-8 eight and eight or 8-9. Eight and nine. 9 and 8 would be like a bummer. But they're going 8 and 9 this season. Um might be a playoff for the Cowboys, maybe not though. I think after this season they are going to take Mike McCarthy and split him from the Dallas Cowboys cuz I do not like Mike McCarthy. I liked him when he was with the Packers. I do not trust him after the season that he had in his first season with the Cowboys, even though Dak Prescott got injured, but one player doesn't make a whole team, because we saw, for example, Tom Brady, he got injured a while back. They still made the playoffs with the backup quarterback, which might have been Garoppolo. Was it Garoppolo? I don't remember. But, yeah, and they had Andy Dalton. I, I don't think he's the worst quarterback in the world. I mean... He used to be a Pro Bowl quarterback and went to the playoffs like three years straight. He's he isn't a bad quarterback. Like if I go to hold on. One second. Why isn't it giving me actual stats? See, I mean, it's not that bad. I don't know if you can see this, but... 64% um, completion percentage definitely could be better. Um, 2,000 yards in 9 games. It's not bad. Um, 14 touchdowns, 8 interceptions, ain't too great, that stat isn't too good, but that that's not terrible numbers, I mean, he, he was, he, he was still solid for the Cowboys, I mean, he didn't, those stats didn't look too bad to me, so I still feel like they could have won the NFC East last year, but they just played terrible, so... 8-9 for the Dallas Cowboys. You absolutely love to see it. Um, I'm going to enjoy publishing this one. So I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Real quick. Um, if you guys want to hear more NFL talks and stuff, I have a biased Twitter account that I talk all about NFL on. So you can follow me. I put There's a link in the description. I'm currently off-season McDerm. Because no one likes the Dio Meister on there. I made all my fans through McDerm. So no one really cares about Omeister. But it's still me. So 
really close to 1,000 followers on there, so if you could follow me over there, I'd really appreciate it. Now 1K, quadruple digits, sounds amazing. And then I do have an Instagram too in the description below, don't really use it that much. But if you want to support me, you can also follow me over there. So, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day, and I don't have much else to say except my forms. Out!